So what I want to focus on next is we got hello world done, which is great. So now I want to focus on um, a, a few more comments about, or um, a few more comments about identifiers, um, and really defining identifiers and the rules and conventions for identifiers. So we're going to start with another comment block, which remember is slash star enter, and it builds that comment block. In programming languages, we use the term identifier to refer to a word. Okay, um, system out. Print line, main, static, public, all identifiers. Okay. Um, I guess we don't use the word word because sometimes identifiers can have numbers or symbols in them. So maybe that's why we use identifier. Um, but identifier is a very broad and general term that encompasses everything from classes, class names, variable names, method names. They're all identifiers. So here's some rules. Identifiers are any combination of, so identifiers can contain letters, identifiers can contain digits, but not as the first character. So an identifier cannot start with the number seven, but it can have the number seven in the middle or at the end. Identifiers can have underscores that character. Identifiers can have dollar signs. And so these are various identifiers. Oops. I'm going to give you an example. Little side note. Perhaps the most stark difference and the biggest adjustment that we all have to make from going from Python to Java is that in Python, we can just like use variables, right? In Java, Java is what's called strongly typed, meaning before you can ever use a variable or any other identifier, it must be defined. Um, and when it's defined, you have to tell the Java compiler what type it is. So if we want to make a variable, we can't just say, hey, here's a variable. We have to say this is a variable that will contain an integer value or a reference to a string object, or a Boolean value. Okay, So we have to be explicit with our, with our types. And the way we do that is before we ever use a variable, we first declare it by specifying the type. So for example, int is for an integer type, similar to Python. And then we can have the variable name. So y is a valid identifier. It's a letter. I can separate multiple variables with a comma x2, valid identifier, because the digit is not the first character. x underscore y, also a valid identifier. x dollar sign, that's a valid identifier. And I need my semicolon here at the end to finish my statement. Just because it's a valid identifier doesn't mean it's necessarily a good idea to use it. We'll talk more la later about coming up with good names for classes and methods and variables. Um, none of these are particularly good. Maybe y is OK if we're doing something with a coordinate system. Um, honestly, I don't recall any Java code that uses a dollar sign. Okay, um, So we're not going to use any dollar signs. Um, underscores are used in, for one particular case, which we'll do in a moment. Otherwise, we don't use underscores. Um, so those are like more conventions. But these are the rules. These are all valid. Let's do an invalid one and see what happens. This, so I'm just going to do a one line comment here because it's a pretty short note. This is not a valid identifier. Int 2y. It's not a valid identifier because it starts with a digit. If I try to compile this code, at the bottom of my screen, it says errors found in class. I can press Control K on Windows, Command K on the Mac, or I can click on the link, and I'll get more information. The information I get is not a statement. Okay, That's the error message from the Java compiler. That's not particularly helpful. Okay, um, 
So when you get that error message, you'll need to look more closely at that, that line and see what might be wrong. In this case, the Java compiler is so confused because I don't even have a valid identifier. It's not sure what to do. All right. Um, so I'm going to leave this in my notes so it doesn't go away, but I'm going to comment it out. Another rule about identifiers, slash star enter. Identifiers are case sensitive, meaning case matters. So these are three different identifiers. Box, all lowercase, is a different identifier than box, all uppercase, is a different different identifier than box with a capital O. These are three separate variables. We would never want three separate variables like this. This would be horrendously confusing to read the code if we have to keep box separate from box separate from box. Okay. I point this out not because we'll take advantage of this rule to create different identifiers, but because if your code isn't compiling but you think it's right, perhaps it's just an uppercase lowercase issue. Maybe you forgot to capitalize something. Okay? And as a result, it, it doesn't recognize the identifier. So just because we can have three variables all called box with different capitals doesn't mean we should ever actually do that in our code. We should not. So those are the rules. Okay? Those are all the rules for, for identifiers. Um, now we'll shift and focus on what are the conventions? What are the best practices? What do other people expect us to do with our identifiers? Let's talk about constants first. By convention, constants are all uppercase. Use an underscore to separate words. A constant is a variable whose value doesn't change. Okay. Let's do an example here. I like to pull in physics examples because I miss teaching physics. So my example of a constant is going to be the speed of light. Speed of light. And I'm separating words with an underscore. All the letters are capitalized. The speed of light is constant. The speed of light is constant in all reference frames. And it's 300 million, so three with eight zeros, meters per second. So that's how we do a constant. The Java compiler doesn't care that it's all capitalized. The Java compiler doesn't care about the underscores. This is a convention. This is to provide a syntax clue for people reading your code or for you later reading your code, that, hey, this variable is a constant. Its value doesn't change. Um, there are ways to enforce this behavior uh, with Java, which we'll get to later. For now, we're just focused kind of on the syntax of it all. Was that your question? Yeah, yeah that's, we'll get to that stuff later. Yeah. All right, another convention slash star enter, by convention, most other identifiers start with a lowercase letter and subsequent words start with an uppercase letter. This is called camel case. Stylistically, this is a big difference between Python and Java. In Python, we did everything as lowercase, and we used underscores to separate words. In Java, we start with a lowercase letter, in most cases, and we use an uppercase letter to separate words. So if the name of our variable is first name, the F is lowercase and the N is capitalized. So that's going to be a little bit of a stylistic shift to make going from Python to, to Java. Because in Python, by convention, we do this as first underscore name. So 
You may have noticed I say most other identifiers start with a lowercase letter. Yesterday we learned that that's an identifier that starts by convention with an uppercase letter. And as a, re a reminder, that's class names. Class names start with an uppercase letter. Okay, And we rely on that syntax clue to help us um, parse code when we read it. So for example, right here, we can infer that string must be a class because it starts with a capital S. Cool. We'll do a lot more of that with that later. All right, if I hit compile, it all compiles. We're in good shape. These are all valid identifiers. One more thing I want to comment on is the curly brackets. Okay. So you'll notice that after we declare our class hello printer, there's an opening curly bracket. And at the very end of our file, there is a closing curly bracket. After we declare our method, the main method, and we have our method header, there's an opening curly bracket. And at the end of all these statements, there's a closing curly bracket. Okay. In Java, we use curly brackets to group statements together. So how do we know what methods are inside a class? We use curly brackets. How do we know what statements are inside of a method? We use curly brackets. How do we know what code block is inside of a loop structure? We use curly brackets. Right? In Python, we use spaces. Okay? So that's a difference. The Java compiler doesn't care about our spaces. Right? Everyone reading your code, including yourself, definitely does care about spaces. So we still indent our code like we do in Python, but we do it for readability, not because the language requires it. And you may have noticed that BlueJay's editor does this for us, right? It automatically indents for us as we go. We don't have to worry about that, which is really nice. But I just want to make sure we understand that the curly brackets are required to define our blocks of code. The white space, the indentation, um, we do by convention for readability. 